Hello and welcome to Kedrick Farms. We're back with another episode of UMRV Upper Mississippi River Valley by DJ Modding. And today we are going to be finishing off picking up a little bit of hay that we cut alongside the house here. We're hauling soybeans up to the elevator right now. We've got a, uh, a hired driver taking care of that for us today. And we're going to be moving all of our newly born cows over into the uh, third barn that we've got here so that we can feed them out on uh, less valuable materials. No sense in uh, paying to have all the TMR for all the little cows until they get a little bit bigger and start uh, contributing to the farm here. Now, last time we were in the middle of picking up this hay and I think we discovered that we can get all the way down the length of the field in about a uh, forage box, but we couldn't make a round for sure. And I was tempted to automate this. However, you know what? I think we're just gonna tickle, tack, tickle, tackle it ourselves. My goodness, we're having trouble with the words today, folks. There's really only a handful of passes here. We've got two wagons. We might as well just do it. I think uh, sometimes trying to leverage course play for a job is more trouble than it's worth. And this is an easy job, all things considered. Plus, it'll go pretty quick if we bump this up into a better gear. I think we can rake at about 11 miles an hour here. Got a nice wide windrow on this. I suppose there's a way I could... Can I narrow the windrow up a bit by collapsing my grab? I don't know if that's actually changing the size of the windrow. It's hard to tell because we just ran out of grass. Well, let's uh, get up here and find out. Maybe? We'll run with it a little bit wider. We've got some play here. I just want to make sure I don't miss any of the actual grass while we're picking it up here. I know I've had struggles with uh, how wide the windrow is sometime with the pickup head on that forage harvester, so if we can shrink the windrow up a little bit, that's gonna help a lot. And before we go into the pond there, we better get turned around. That was a Close call for sure. And just because I'm not using a course play doesn't mean I can't uh, get an GPS track going here. Maybe if I could go the right way. We're having some trouble steering on the side hill here. It wants to uh, drift to the left. Yeah, that's not a straight GPS course. Did I finally get it? I think we finally got it, folks. All right, that's one round, which also, coincidentally, wraps up the long rows here on this field. So I think I've just got, what, one more round down here on the shorter rows? Maybe a round and a half? Whatever it is, it's not much, that's for sure. And uh, part of the reason why we're doing this now, as opposed to jumping right into our cows, is I need my semi back to run the livestock trailer. We ended up purchasing a livestock trailer, or leasing a livestock trailer, I should say, so that we can move our cows between the two barns, because that was the only way I could think of to get that done here on the map. And without the semi to hook up to that trailer, we're kind of dead in the water. And the semi is quite busy getting all those soybeans hauled up. So it's one of those like, well, as long as we're waiting, We've got other jobs we can finish. All right, I think this is the last pass here coming up. So we're going to, whoa, go all the way down in the ditch here as we turn around. That's all right. And let's see if I can straighten this out a little bit. Looking good. We're going to get, what, one, two, three, four four full forage boxes off of this, maybe a little bit more. Should be a fair amount to keep the animals going here until we get our next cutting. That big field over there is going to be a, a good cutting here come probably August. I think it's going to be ready, so we'll have to just uh, keep up with the cycle here of uh, cutting these fields every couple of months and 
I'm hoping we can get three cuttings off of each of these fields uh, over the course of the uh, year here. That way we will have plenty of hay as we enter the winter season. Now this looks done to me, so let's just curve that off a bit and go ahead and shut this rig down. We'll get it driven back up here to the other end out of the way. And we're going to jump into a forage harvester. All right, we're all the way up here and let's go ahead and grab this forage harvester here. I'm excited to see if we can manage to get down to the end of the field here or not. Get this thing fired up into a higher gear. There we go. Like I said, it's uh, real close on the size of this windrow to the forage harvester itself, but we're getting it done. We're getting it done. We're already at... Uh, 18% we're just getting started this is gonna be a good yield of hay we a jump in cab here a little bit easier to follow the windrow along for sure and looking over at our yield map we did okay it's all yellow I was kind of expecting a little bit higher yields but I'm not sure how grass works in general I know we fertilized and had uh, lime down and everything on these fields so it should have been pretty good I also don't know what kind of uh, ground type we have over here, so that's going to be affecting things as well. I don't know that we've got necessarily premium soils in our uh, yard area. It's probably a good chance why that's where this is the, uh, the yard and the pasture soil as opposed to being another little field or something. I'm going to clean up some of the ends here. And we didn't get as far as we did the first time. We're only at uh, 63%. So I think what I'm going to do is take one of these shorter rows back up. And we should get full uh, as we take the shorter row up. Hopefully leaving a lot less uh, miscellaneous. Like I don't want to get halfway up and be having to switch in the middle of the field. I'd rather get all the way down to an end and switch if possible. I say that now, but it looks like we're actually getting really good yields out of this short row. So I don't think there's any chance we get to the end now. That's all right. I'd rather have more hay and have to struggle with it than come up with less hay and have to take another bit back down. So we're going to slow up here. There's my 100%. Drop the wagon off. So let's run out here with the second forage box real quick and we'll get this all switched over. It's, uh, I don't know what I was doing with the forage harvester. We kind of pulled it off into an odd angle there. I guess what I'll do is swing around here and park this one right alongside the one that's there. And then I can back in with the forage harvester and grab it. Something like that. And we'll get this full one unloading back up at the harvest store. And then while that's going, we'll stop back out here and start chopping again. I think that's the that's the play. The uh, driver called me over to check. We're running out of uh, beans here in the bin, he said. So let's uh, see what we can do to make sure that's the case. I think we're all emptied out. We are indeed. So we're going to have him take this final load back up to the railway station and we'll have everything all loaded up up there and ready to go to sell when the train comes in. And when he gets back, we're going to finally be able to start working on some of these animals. We've got that forage box still emptying out over here, so I'm going to go ahead and get back to the chopping and we should be able to just pick right back up into the row here. Very nice. I'm thinking what we'll do is we'll take the rest of these short rows next, uh, since I'm over here, and then we'll take the long row all the way back up to the exit of the field on our way back out. That should leave us in the uh, best position here. I don't know how many of these short rows we'll get into the forage box here, but I'm hoping we can at least uh, 
make it to the end and get turned around. There wasn't a lot left here. It's just uh, piling up, piling up. We're starting to get full here. I'm at 95%. Uh, just hoping we can get up on top of the hill here before we've got to stop. There it is. And we'll go ahead and just do the same thing here where I drop the trailer. We'll bring the other one back over and we'll swap them out. Looks like the 4440 is all done unloading anyway. Good deal. The timing is working out perfectly on uh, this whole setup. At least when I'm running it solo. And I have to say it's uh, exceptionally foggy on the map today. We've got this uh, thick haze everywhere. I don't know uh, what's going on, but I'm not a fan. I, I generally prefer nice, clear, bright skies. But sometimes you just got to do the job in the weather you got. We're going to drop that off and get switched over here. I think we'll do the exact same thing I did last time, which is let's run this up to the harvest store and get it unloading. I think there's a very good chance that we're going to need one more... Uh, box out here. I don't think I'm going to get all of the hay that's left on the field here uh, back up out in the box that we just dropped off, so it makes sense to keep the unloading moving. I have to say, every time we're driving down this road, I hear the uh, plane fly overhead. I can never quite manage to catch a glimpse of it, but I can hear the the sound of the propellers in the background. It's kind of a, a cool feeling, although you know, at some point, you know, you'd think you'd get tired of flying around over our farm. All right, we've got this unloading here into the harvest store. Let's, uh, let's get going. I'm back out here. Just double checking our semi managed to unload without issue. He's coming back up to the farm. Good deal. Can never be too careful when you uh, hire these uh, extra drivers for stuff. Sometimes they like to go and... Uh, coffee at the most inopportune times we're all hooked up let's go ahead and see how far we're gonna get here on this now I've got some cleaning up to do on this row uh, up past the trees there so I think we're gonna go ahead and try and nab all of that on the way up here while we're thinking about it I don't want to forget to get all of these uh, little bits and pieces that we've dropped around we need every ounce of hay if we're going to keep all of these new cows fed. We've doubled the amount of cows we've had this month. And I think that's going to really put the farm to the test. All right, we've got a fair bit of it right here on the side hill. Looking good. And I guess since we're all the way up here, we might as well just go to the end row and start taking this back down. I was really thinking for some reason that I was going to end up on the other end of the field and I would follow this long row all the way up to this point to get out, not uh, be up here and turning back into it. So I don't know what happened. Apparently I can't count. That's all right. We're going to just uh, keep going here and taking it down. I don't think there's any way that we finish this row, though, on this wagon, like I've already said. So we'll see how far we can get. All right, I'm coming down to the end here. We just hit 100%. There's a lot less left than I was expecting, if I'm being honest. But that's all right. I'm going to swing them back around here. We're going to drop this trailer. And I'll be right back out here with the empty and the 4440. All right, last box here. Excited to uh, be wrapping up another job here on the farm. We've got so much going on here. I'm loving it. Never a dull moment. We'll switch back out here. I do want to just finish off the forage harvesting here. While I'm, uh, while I'm thinking about it, we can always unload the rest of these wagons after the fact. I have missed a couple of little bits here and there as we were getting turned around and just following this path back. So maybe I'll try and grab them here as we get turned around. Probably not even worth it, but, you know, the perfectionist in me occasionally needs to grab things like that. And here we are. Let's see. I'm, I'm really curious to see just how many tons are left out here. And 
probably, uh, in my mind at least, mentally judge whether this all is all worth it. Eh, 11%. That's not too bad, actually. We'll pick up a couple of the bits and pieces and be good to go. Let's get this all back up here to the end of the field at least. And I think I saw the semi pulling around, which means we're all done with the uh, haul on the grain. We're not going to sell it just yet, though. If we look at our stock prices here, I've got a little bit of room left on the ceiling here. 371, we're at 358. You know, it's not a lot, but, you know, what's that? 13 grand almost? We'll, uh, we'll hold out a little bit. $13,000 is going to go a long way towards covering some of the equipment that we've leased and such. I think I paid maybe four grand to lease that uh, livestock trailer for the day to get everything moved around. So we've got to at least uh, hold out for another four grand, I think. I got the uh, forage harvester all moved up into the yard and emptied that uh, box in. And now we're bringing the last full box up here to the... Uh, harvest store. We've been using this as a driveway. I should probably actually toss some gravel or something down on it at some point, but it works out real nice getting in here, especially when somebody leaves the mixer wagon parked over on the other side there. So I'm going to let this guy continue to unload, and I'm just super curious to get started on moving these cows. We've got this uh, animal transport mod off of the in-game mod hub, and then I modified it so that the uh, Wilson here is gonna hold, I believe, 50 cows for us. And uh, we've got 500 cows that I need to move from uh, the two barns into a different one, which means we're gonna be taking a total of 10 trips here with the, uh, with the trailer. I didn't think moving more than 50 at a time felt very realistic. Honestly, 50 at a time is probably a little much for that particular trailer. Although I'm sure there are larger trailers like that in real life. I don't know what the max number of head of cattle that you can move around. But I figured, eh, we'll move it up to 50 because these are supposed to actually be calves and not uh, full size steers. And that will uh, at least make it a little bit better here in my mind on justifying how we're doing it. I'll be honest, I'm not looking forward to making 10 trips, but 10 trips is better than I don't even remember what the base game trailer is. It's a lot uh, more painful. It would have been 12 cows at a shot. So moving uh, 500 cows 12 at a time, that seemed like pure torture. So I'm happy to bend the rules a little bit here. Here we go. All hooked up. Let's see if I can back this thing up over here by a barn B and load up a few cows. Now, I am not doing the best job here of backing it up to the door per se, but we're going to do our best and we're going to move. Actually, can I move them the other way? Can I click? Uh. So my edit didn't uh, take. We're still only at 36 animals here that can come into the trailer, unfortunately. I must have uh, forgot to copy the XML file back over when I made the edits, so we'll live with it. I'm going to just uh, take this and run with it. That's going to be a few more trips, but we'll manage somehow. I think it's going to be an easy route. All I have to do is swing right through over here and unload them right back into the next pen. So let's see what we got here. Yes, sir. And I can't. Uh... I can't hit backwards to get the 36, so I have to. Animal type does not support unloading. Oh. Well, that's unfortunate. Let me take this back over to our first barn and see if we're having some problems. I'm going to be very frustrated if we've just uh, accidentally deleted 36 cows. So this is either a problem with the barns or a problem with the trailer. I don't know which just yet. 
but we're about to find out. All right, so I can move them between these, but uh, I can't move them into this other barn. Let's go back here and look at this. Interesting. All right, well, let's try this one more time. 36 animals moved to trailer. I can move 36 back if I wanted to, but we're going to take them right back over. I'm going to try this one more time. And if this doesn't work, I'm not sure what we're going to do because I really didn't want to feed all of these baby animals uh, TMR for the whole time. That's going to be just an insane amount of very expensive food. Our entire uh, philosophy here revolved around being able to dump them off in this other barn. Yeah, it's not going to let me unload into this barn. Well, that is very unfortunate. We're going to park that there for a second. I'm curious if it'll let me buy them into this barn. So I can buy a cow into this barn. All right, so let's think this through for a minute. If I can't actually move them into there, but I can buy and sell from there, I guess what I could do is sell all the newly born cows and then rebuy them over in the other barn. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a pain, but I can just uh, rework my money to end up in the same spot that we're in right now and like kind of uh, settle the difference up so that it's a net zero uh, because I think the purchase cows are going to be starting off young at the same age so I'm not really giving myself an advantage I'm just uh, well just giving myself a uh, carpal tunnel probably but that's all right it's farm sim how we're getting used to it so here we go I'm at 7732 let me write this down. We're at $7,732. I'm going to come in here. I have a bunch of zero month old Holsteins and I'm going to, oh, I don't want to move them to trailer. I need to move the trailer out of the way to sell. All right. So I'm going to get them all sold. All right, there we go. The first batch is now sold off. I'm going to come over here and do the same thing in the other barn for all the baby cows. I'm just realizing now that I don't have to sell them uh, 36 at a time since we are just selling them. I can do it at the max 60. Spend a couple less clicks on all this. All right, all those are sold now for a total of $57,732. So let me see now what it's going to take to repurchase these young ones. First batch. Oops. Second batch. Third batch. And we're officially out of money already. Okay. I'm going to just uh, blow this up here a bit. Oh, wait. Um, I'm going to take the loan up by 100,000 and see how far we get. All right. So now I've got 500 baby cows and I need to grant myself $80,000 because we got 20,732. So... 80,000, one, two, three, was the net loss on having to do it that way. Uncredible. That's right, I said uncredible. It's the opposite of incredible. All right. Now I've got 500 baby cows in here with a bunch of hay. Can't wait. Hopefully there aren't any other issues with this particular uh, uh, building here. And I think the only big downside of this is I think the health was all the way up on all of the baby cows over in the other barn here. And now it's all the way down. Oh, well, we'll get them back up and running here pretty quickly with the hay in there. And these guys are now back up to speed. And then next round, once we give birth, these will fill out and we'll have a full farm 
of uh, productive cows, which will be awesome. So I'm going to shut this down here right now. I've got cows and hay. And everything else is good to go. I guess this trailer was a complete waste uh, for today, unfortunately. But you know what? It wasn't the trailer's fault. So I say we're going to back this thing up in here. And I'm going to give it the uh, privilege of being the thumbnail for today's episode. Because... You know what? We tried. It tried. It just didn't manage to uh, pan out for us. But sometimes, sometimes that's just how the uh, cookie crumbles, folks. All right. So with that little fiasco out of the way, let's take a quick look at the other thing we've been working on here, which is our soybeans. I need to take a look at the market here. Minneapolis price is going up. So I think what we're going to do is actually give this a little bit of time and maybe we'll take the chance. We're going to move the time forward here see if we can get into uh, the next day in July here. See if that price keeps going up. We're at 90.68 and I really want to tick one day past here just to make sure that these cows are going to handle themselves all right. You know, the new barn is at 126,000 liters. Let's see what that looks like after a day. All right, I didn't quite make it to the next day here. However, the price came up to 91.11, and I felt like that was uh, pretty high. If we look here at the time-saving stock check menu, we're pretty close to the max price, and it started dropping again here. And so we're going to try and go grab this and get our train going here. All right, I'm up here at the train station and I'm trying to remember, whoops, where I can rent the train. It's somewhere right around here. Oh, it's right over here. What do you know? We have rented the train. Now all we've got to do is wait for it to show up here. Should come along in just a moment. I was starting to get worried, but the train did finally show up. I teleported to the tracks, and now I'm stuck. Oh no, there's a train coming, and I can't get off the tracks. All right, here we go. Let's see if we can get this loaded up with all of our soybeans. I like that we've got a, a number of grain cars on this train. At some point, we could certainly... Uh, load up a number of these and have quite the haul up. I think even this time we will have more than a single car. Look at that. I can get behind that. Better get these all closed up. Don't want to lose any crops on the way up to Minneapolis. And there we go. Uh, looks like one and a half cars of soybeans. That's pretty nice. We should get a good haul off of all of this. I'm looking forward to it. We're going to send this train on its way here and a reap of the profits. Now, I have to say one, two, three, four, five, six cars, seven cars, maybe. If I can put stuff in those last two, which are open cars. Oh, that last one's like a log trailer. So six full regular grain carts maybe seven um that's actually not that much grain it looks like they hold i i didn't pay attention here 2500 or so in the first one um yeah i could certainly fill a train up that might be a fun challenge to do here so at some point is see if we can get enough of a given crop type to completely fill a train we'll have to add that to the list of things to achieve on this map before we call it a day I forget just how big this map is I mean we're cruising at 50 miles an hour and I've been sending this train for a minute now I love that we've actually got a random uh, grain truck and stuff out in the yard at this place it's the little details that really add to the decoration all right do you want to the train to sell the load of goods in Minneapolis yes I do Oh, and we got a nice $20,000 environmental score bonus on top of it. Look at that. 
Good times. Well, that's $386,000 of uh, money we didn't have a minute ago. I'm, uh, I'm already counting the ways that we can spend that money. So let's uh, jump back up here to the farm. Uh, I think, you know, this is probably a great place to wrap things up for today. We got a, a bunch of hay picked up. And we've got all of our cows moved around, even if it wasn't quite the way we'd intended to do it. And now I think the plan is going to be to uh, move the clock forward here and jump into, I believe, corn silage is coming next. If I just look at our crop states here, we're getting close. Another month or so here, and I think we could be getting into some chopping time which is going to come with some upgrades here on the farm i'm not going to lie i'm excited to get into some bigger equipment here and i've still got my eye on this field here we needed to get to eight hundred and eighty six thousand dollars if we wanted to grab this field i guess before we go and spend a whole bunch of money on some other things let me borrow out and see how far we can get here i don't think we're going to get to it we're going to come up just a bit short, $831,000 here. So not quite going to make it there. We'll uh, we'll have to see what happens as things develop. I think we'll definitely be able to make it there by the next uh, spring. We'll be able to accomplish that field. I was just hoping we could pick that up before harvest time. So we'll keep an eye on that, though, as things progress. And uh, yeah, that's going to be all for today. Kedrick out. Ah, eh, what the heck. We went ahead and sold the baler, the rake, and the roller here to get enough money so we can go ahead and buy that field. Boom. It's ours. We've got hopefully enough money to do the other things that I want to do via leasing. We'll find out. Catch you next time.